free space, choose a new partition, and we're this time going to go for the swap file. Now, cool thing is, if I just select, uh, let me see, swap file here, because this is a swap area, I can just press OK and it will do everything. I don't have to specify a mount point, I just tell my Ubuntu system, like, this is your swap file, this is the partition where you can put your swap file. If you're working with Windows, it's a nice idea to do the same thing on one partition, your C drive, for example, put your Windows, my documents are stored on the D drive, and your swap file is on the E drive. Now, why do I do this? Well, if your data, uh, if something goes wrong with your data, I, for example, your entire directory fills up, your system doesn't crash, because your system never runs out of space, it's just the partition where your data is stored that actually fills up. Your system will remain operational. If your system goes down, your data is untouched. So if you need to reinstall the system and you have this partitioning in place, you can just say, OK, I want the system, the root, installed over there, I want the swap installed over there, I want the home drive installed over here, and then you just deselect this little format tag. What the system will do then, it will format the system partition and install a fresh copy of Windows, it will use the swap partition for its swap, it will mount its home folder to this partition, but it won't erase it, so your data is always safe. This is a very cool way and a very advanced way of installing Linux. If you just do as I say and uh, do as I do, you'll be fine and you'll have a very professionally uh, installed Linux partitioning table. Everything's set up, so we're going to click forward. And uh, now it's going to ask us for some uh, user uh, data. So it's going to ask me for my name. My name is Nightwise. It's going to suggest a login name or a username. In my case, that's the same. It's going to uh, ask for a password. Okay, password, password. And uh, what's the name of this computer? I'm going to give it a cool name Stargazer. Picard's old ship. Okay, and then it will ask me, do you want to enter your password before you log in, or do you want the system to log in automatically? And I'll always require a password, otherwise people will just be able to boot straight into your computer. Okay, next up, I'm going to click forward. It's always nice, it says forward, it doesn't say next. It's going to give me a summary, English language, French Macintosh wacky wacky keyboard. Nightwise is my name, Nightwise is my login name, I live in uh, Belgium, capital of uh, Brussels, in Europe. Migration Assistant, here you'll be offered some text or some options if you already have a system uh, installed on that hard drive. For example, if you have a Windows XP installed, Win uh, Ubuntu will actually see this and will ask you if it has to migrate that data to the Ubuntu installation, so all the data and the settings will be copied to your Ubuntu installation. So, this is a blank hard drive, no migration information, and uh, blah 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 blah. It's going to give you a summary. You can click Advanced. It's going to uh, ask you whether or not to install the bootloader. Don't touch this. Uh, do you want to join the popularity contest? That way your Ubuntu system will tell the Ubuntu repositories which applications you installed, and uh, in, U in Ubuntu applications are called packages, I mostly click this. And if you use a HTTP proxy, you might want to enter that one here because it's going to connect to the internet when it's installing to see if there are any later versions out there. No proxy for me, I'm going to participate in the package survey, help out the guys at Ubuntu a little bit, and I click install. Now it's going to start up the partitioner, create the partitions, format the partitions, and start installing the system. Now, if you say, Nightwise, I'm having a little bit of a hard time downloading the ISO and stuff like that, or you're looking for a nice birthday present for somebody, you can actually uh, order the Ubuntu CDs for free. Just go to the link that I'll provide in the show notes, or go to the Ubuntu website, and you'll be able to install uh, to order several copies of, Win of uh, Ubuntu, 
and uh, get them in your mailbox for free worldwide. Doesn't matter where you go, it takes a little while, but you get all of your stuff for free. So uh, you can actually uh, order the CDs for the several versions of uh, Ubuntu, and they will ship them to you right away, and you'll be able to start playing right away. Now, if you're looking for a nice birthday present or a nice present for somebody, why not order those? And if you you can actually order multiple copies to give to your friends, and it's always cool to copy them. You can make legal copies of uh, your uh, Ubuntu CDs and ha hand them out to friends. So that's all cool. Now, as you can see, it is pretty quick on the install. I'm going to leave it running. I'm going to go downstairs, going to get me some coffee. I will be back when this baby is done. In the wise words of Ace Ventura, alrighty then. You can see, you can either go on and continue testing Ubuntu, but you've already installed it, so why not click the button and go for restart right now. Your system is going to reboot. And there you go, our system has rebooted and we are presented with a very fancy login screen. We have the date right here and it will ask you for your username. Enter Nightwise, your password, the password that you entered and the system will boot up. Let's take a good look at what it is. Here you go. Now, um, the way Ubuntu works, or uh, by default, is a little bit weird. I mean, you have uh, your menu for your applications up here. Places is where you go if you want to connect to uh, another server, if you want to browse the network, or if you want to go to a certain folder in your home directory. And system is uh, the where you want to go when you want to tweak your system. Now, if you open up an application, for example, I'm going to open up Firefox. This is like the Windows equivalent of the uh, quick launch bar. You will see that the uh, program tabs are right here. I mean, they are at the bottom. And this might be a little bit confusing for some people. So we're going to going to start off by, you know, uh, adapting the interface just a little bit. So what I'm going to do down here where my taskbar is and where I have my icon to show my desktop and my icon for my virtual desktops, I'm just going to um, leave those out. I'm going to remove this panel by right clicking on the panel and choose delete this panel. Oh, be careful when you delete panels. Now I'm going to use, I'm going to move this panel down here. As you can see, I can't do that. I can't drag the panel around, and there's a little bit of a workaround. Just click here, choose Properties, um, deselect the Expand option, click Close, grab hold of your bar, put it down here, click Somewhere, again, Properties, oh, on the free part of your toolbar, which is not easy to find, because you just uh, kind of uh, see if we can do it here. Yep, click expand again. Now your toolbar is down here. We're going to give it some space for the, um, you know, open programs that you have. So I'm going to remove this one, something that you don't really need, and I'm going to add to the panel a application launcher. So the list with your applications. You can just scroll down. There are plenty to choose from. We'll go, go for the Windows list. Just drag it around using this slider. And there you can see that those are the buttons for my open applications. If these quick launch buttons annoy you, you can just right click on them, remove them from the panel so you have a little bit more space. Now I'm running this in a VM with a fairly low resolution. And if you say, like, Nightwise, this is a little bit too confusing for me, this uh, this three-word menu, I just want to use uh, an, a cl more classic way, just remove it from the panel, add something new to the panel, and uh, here you go, the main GNOME menu bar, click on Add, Close, right-click it, Tell it to move. Oh, this one's in the way. I'm going to remove that one. 
move, put it over here, and lock it to the panel. And this is actually just like your start button in Windows. Now you can see you have the places over here and the system preferences over here. So this kind of looks a little bit more like you might, what you might be used to. Here you have the icon for your network card, your sound card, and of course the date. Uh, you can add a lot more to the panel if you want to. There are all kinds of spiffy things like, uh, uh, I don't know, fish, uh, not, uh, you need that, keyboard indicator, uh, button to log out, stuff like that. There's tons of stuff. What I always put in there is a shutdown button. And I drag that one all the way to the left. So I, I can just shut down my system using one single click. One of the cool things that you can also add is a system monitor. Just click on the properties here. You can actually monitor, let's say, our memory, network, swap space, whatever. So you always have that one in your toolbar. But because we don't have a lot of space, I'm just going to leave that one out and have a very standard way of installing stuff. So you have your start button or your GNOME button over here and the programs that you have open over here. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is going to go is uh, doing our updates. As you can see, Ubuntu has automatically launched the update manager, which will inform you of all the updates that you need to do, just like Windows. Now, always do your updates, but before we're going to do that, we are going to enable more repositories. A repository is a big, big server on the internet where Ubuntu gets its uh, programs. So you can install everything you want straight from the repositories. That means that you're, you'll never need an installation file, you never need a CD-ROM. Ubuntu just pulls down from the internet what it wants and what it needs. Now, you can actually uh, choose from several repositories to uh, get software. The more repositories you have enabled, the more software you can download. So before we start updating and doing everything, we're going to take care of those repositories. Therefore, we're going to go to System, Administration, Software Sources. We'll ask you again for your password. And here you will have several options to choose from. Um, you have all of these that are selected, which is canonical supported open software. This is the main software directory, the universe one, the restricted one if you have proprietary drivers that are non-free or non-free uh, as in free speech, or uh, some um, special, uh, you know, copyright stuff. I've got all of this enabled just not the source code. You can always uh, choose where Ubuntu wants to download your updates. So that can either be Belgium or uh, from the main server, for example. Depends on where you have. Mostly the server in your own country is the fastest one, except in Belgium, because it's the, ours is slow as molasses. Then you can choose your third-party software. We're going to enable these two and it's going to ask us which updates we want to have. Uh, I want my important security updates, I want my recommended updates, I want to check for updates daily, and I want to install my security updates without any confirmation. That way I'll always be safe. Authentication is something you don't have to worry about right now, and neither is statistics. Just click Close. Now it's going to ask you to reload its available software list. Because we have added more repositories to the mix, it's going to say like, hey, um, there's more software out there, can I please get the menu? You know, the menu which uh, with all the software you can actually choose from, like a menu in a restaurant. So we're going to have it uh, do that. going to click Reload, and it's going to download the list of packages or programs that are on all of those extra repositories that we just selected. Uh, it's going to take a while, but now you have a massive, massive list. Now, there is one repository that is not enabled by default, and this is a pretty important one, because it's the uh, Medibuntu repository. And the Medibuntu repository 
is not listed in uh, in these repositories over here, but it is the one that will enable you to install Skype, install DVD playback, and stuff like that. So before we start updating.